All right, hi everyone. I'm going to present the, our solution to the problem of string children, number 20. Um, let's jump right into the problem and go to see our setup. So here it is. We have this wooden plate and this rotating wheel that pushes the push string. Thanks to a potentiometer, we can vary the speed of the string. All right. And we can vary the angle of the of the of the setup, like so. Right. And we are using cotton strings of a length L and a given density. Alright, so we're going to study the shape of this loop and we'll see how waves propagate inside this system. Alright, so first of all, let's see the overall shape. We have tested our system in a vacuum belt and, well, there was no result. The system doesn't work, the, fold, the string folds directly. So that's why we introduce a nair drag following this equation. And indeed, if we scratch the surface of our string, we see that there is an effect and that the air drag increases. So here is a recap of our force. So this is a bit of our string. We have this drag force that goes in the tangent direction opposite to the velocity. We have the gravity. And in the tension, E surface is the angle between the horizontal and the tangent. S is the arc length, so going from 0 to L, the length of the strings. And uh, yeah, basically that's it. So why do we need this drag force? Well, all right. We have the gravity that wants to drag the strings down. However, the effect of the drag force is the opposite and try to rise these strings up. So we see from the, the, the last video, if we increase the drag force, well, the, the strings rise up. So basically, there is an equilibrium between the drag force and the gravity, which is the momentum. There is um, a cons um, an equality between the momentum caused by the drag force and the gravity of all the whole loop. All right, so now we can derive equation for this system. So here it is. But here we have assumed that the system is inelastic. All right, um, so let's get into the equation. The first one, there is something interesting because we see that if this term is equal to zero, it gives a singularity. And what can happen if this is zero? Well, we have either eta of s is a constant or it is pi over 2 plus uh, a number of pi. Right, so, well, theta is constant is not happening in our system. And so we can erase that possibility. But we can see that if of s is pi over 2 happens right here. And why is that important? Well, for our simulation, we have the singularity point uh, that will stop the simulation. So basically we have to separate our system into the top part and the bottom part. And we can say even more, at this point we expect the tension to be equal to rho v squared. All right. So we need to invest investigate what is the property of this point. And for that we have done some measurements. And uh, here it is, we see that if we increase the angle theta zero, the initial angle, the y component of this furthest point increase, and if we change again this angle, we see that the x component follows this kind of bell. All right. And for the velocity, we see that if we increase velocity, the y component increase, and the x component increase and reach a plateau, which is the length of the string divided by two, basically. So we can do simulation now, thanks to those points we have uh, there experimentally. And all right, here we see that for high velocity, it's not working that well. However, for the best case, we can have this prediction and it's working quite well. So here it is for the initial angle being zero and a small velocity here. And using this prediction, we can now derive, uh, no, sorry. Um, we investigated uh, even more uh, parameters. So we have already discussed the theta zero and the velocity. And uh, if we increase the density, actually, we see that the point x and y both goes down. And if we increase the length, uh, we see that L reaches a plateau. So we increase and reach a plateau again, and y uh, decrease. And from this prediction of the shape, we can actually find the tension inside our string. And we see that, indeed, here, we have a nice prediction of this uh, uh, tension value. We see that we obtain numerically these values, which is uh, almost what we expect from theory. 
All right, so now using this, we can uh, try to study the wave propagation. All right, so let's do a bit of observation. So we've done uh, some small, we try to do small perturbation, and we see these wave packet here propagating and slowly damping, and um, it, it slows down actually. So how could we explain that? Well, first of all, let's derive an equation. So starting from the equilibrium, we consider a small displacement, and using only Newton's law and keeping first order's term, we can get this equation. So now let's focus a bit on this equation and see some important terms. All right, the first one here, we can see that it's quite similar to the well-known wave equation here. And this part is the phase velocity. And if there is a change of phase velocity uh, in our system, well, we expect indeed a kind of damping because different, um, we have different uh, speed of these waves during the, the, on the stream. All right. Um, so that's one part of the explanation. Now let's do a bit of reformulating this equation. Um, so basically here we assume that the tension is constant, just to see some important results, and we ignore the effect of gravity. So we render the equation dimensionless, and C is this constant, it's important to see that it is, it is positive. And if we introduce those variables, um, we can get this equation. So this is the same equation as before, but in this form. And this is important because now we can see that we can apply separation of variables to have two different solutions. And two dif different solutions are a backward propagating wave and a forward propagating wave. So actually this forward propagating wave is always positive, as C is a positive constant. So the forward wave always goes from the left to the right without any problem. However, we can see that this part here for the backward one, we have a 1 minus C, and it possibly can be negative. And if it is negative, then we see from comparing to that term that it will go in the same direction as the forward propagating wave, so from left to right. And what is the condition for that? Well, just rewriting C, we get this condition that rho v square is bigger or equal to n. So now recall what we've been uh, calculating in our simulation. We are indeed in this regime where rho v square is bigger or equal to n. And what is more, if this term is equal to zero, so when rho v square equals to n, well, we expect the waves to be stopped, so the backward wave to be stopped at the left, at the far right point of the loop. All right, so this is interesting because now uh, there is some uh, important phenomena happening. Um, we see that we increase the angle theta, we have a small bump appearing here, and if we increase the velocity, it also appears. So we have a hypothesis we haven't been able to verify, um, but it is that all perfect, uh, backward waves actually accumulate at this part of the string and give this small rising up of the, of the loop. All right. So here is a bit of uh, a kind of simulation of this system. So we see uh, the forward propagating wave and the backward that is quite bigger. So that's uh, actually quite what we are observing here. Um, obviously, we, don't, we can't really see well the forward propagating wave, but we, uh, we are able to see some reflection here, even if reflection uh, is not uh, evident because there is a kind of perturbative effect here due to the wheel. Um, but yeah, basically all of the observation we, we have done. Um, yes, all right. So for the key points we observe, we have seen that there is an equilibrium between drag force and gravity. So the uh, equality of momentum, of uh, momentum force, sorry. Uh, we have done prediction thanks to numerical simulation that worked quite well, and we have even found the tension inside the stream. And we have the right wave equation that um, showed us that backward waves uh, stop at the further point, and uh, that we had some damping effect. And however, um, our problem uh, is that we, we rely on experimental results to fully uh, predict the, the stream shape. Um, the, Simulation we've done are not, they are quite unstable, so we weren't able to verify our hypothesis of perturbation 
and there is probably some more perturbative effect uh, due to the flow we could observe. Good morning, everybody. Well, first, I want to congratulate the Switzerland team for such a beautiful and work solution. Uh, I really appreciate that solution. It's, it's very nice. Um, well, there are some remarkable points. Well, first, let me state what the problem asks. So in this, in this problem, well, first, we have to explain the overall shape of the loop, and second, uh, we have to investigate uh, the propagation of waves on the string, along the whole string. So, well, let's start by the remarkable points of the presentation uh, and the solution. Well, first, the experimental setup was really nice and it allowed to compare the model with experimental data, so that's a, a remarkable point. Also, the analysis of the drag force effect in the shape of the loop. Then they got the shape equation to describe the, the loop, the overall shape of the loop. And they compare the simulation of the model with the experimental data. Uh, and also, uh, another remarkable point in the solution is the uh, analysis tension. Uh, yes, the analysis of the tension in the bound point and the string point of the string and well they solved the second question also which was the wave propagation yeah. and they formulate the equation to describe these propagations along the string and well uh, the bound hypothesis uh, was also a good remarkable point in the solution but well uh, always there is there are things to improve in any solution. And I think maybe we can discuss something about the overall shape analysis. Maybe there are other ways to describe the overall shape uh, with more physical meaning, or maybe, yes, a, an easy way. And maybe uh, with that analysis, um, one can describe better the wave propagation along the string. So maybe we can discuss a little bit about that and also the mechanical properties of the string, because as we saw, uh, they only used one string, and they didn't change the properties of the string, such as the, well, the roughness of the surface of, of the string, or maybe the elasticity of the string, or the, all those mechanical properties. So well, for the discussion points, uh, well, we want to discuss about an, a Lagrangian description of the system. Maybe using this Lagrangian description could improve the solution, or maybe uh, this description could, uh, could be easier, or maybe it, is, it has more, uh, more <coughs> meaningful, a uh, more physical meaning. Then we want to discuss about the drag force because they stay, well, they use. They introduced the drag force in the system, but I didn't quite get um, how you model the drag force in the system. So what well, I want to discuss about that. And also maybe uh, talk about the case where the string is an extensible string, uh, what happened in, in that case. So well, I want to start with the discussion right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, well, uh, well, let's start with the description of the overall shape and the description of the system. Uh, did you try to study the system using a Lagrange equation, maybe associate a Lagrangian to the system? Okay, so yes, that's what the, the first uh, idea we had, to use a Lagrangian. Yes. Uh, however, I believe it's not possible because the drag force is not a conservative force, and Lagrangian only works with conservative force and potential. So I believe it's kind of a lost fight to try to describe the system with Lagrangian. Yes, that's true, but when, when you have the Lagrangian equation, uh, you can equate the, the equation to the external forces, which are not, not conservative. Mm -hmm. When you have no conservative forces in the system, you can equate the Lagrangian equation to that mm -hmm. force, external force. 
So Lagrangian analysis is also possible to introduce in this system. Okay. And maybe if we this well, if we well, it's a, it's a proposal to use the, the Lagrangian equation. If we introduce the Lagrange equations, maybe the, there are there is a, a more physical meaning about the systems because well, it is known that Lagrange equation allow us to understand a little bit better mm -hmm. what is going on in the system. So, do you think the Lagrangian equation could be introduced? Maybe I. <laughs> well, I guess. I, I have, have I guess. Yes. <laughs> well. I, I don't have the question in mind, so I, I can't really show you what my is. So. Uh, okay. Uh, well, let's talk about a little bit about the drag force. Yeah. How did you model the drag force? Okay, so you've seen that we uh, use the. Okay. Uh, we use these definitions. Uh, of, the, of the drag force. For and, uh, yeah, and how to define the coefficient? Okay, so for the coefficient, basically we use these assumptions of uh, the, the equivalent of moment of force. So we, we have our string like that. So we will have the y axis and the x axis. And we interpolate the, the shape in line. And basically we've calculated the moment of force caused by the gravity along this all the string and we've done the same to the drag force and we find the value of the drag force equal to those moment of force. Okay, so you're assuming that if that the force which is stabilizing uh, the system in the drag force, right? Mm -hmm. Like so this is the drag force. No it's not in that direction. Actually the drag force goes opposite to the velocity like that. Ah, okay. But it has so the vertical component is negative. Yes. Of the drag force. Here, yes. Yes. Uh, and we have also the negative component of the weight. <coughs> yes. Right. So, well. But if you imagine just the force, it, it, it will tend but to. But you are equating that they are offside. The drag force. Okay, so the drag force moves yes. along the stream. Uh, okay, so but, but just imagine there what's happening. Okay, I, 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 mean, I agree that the gravity will tend to bring yes. down this. But imagine that this drag force, if you try to push, back of the loop, so it will tend to rise up easier. So uh, uh, the, the drag force is rising up the yes. string. And did you measure that, well, you're equating that force to the weight? Well, we've done some measurement of this, uh, of this CF coefficient, uh, not a lot. Uh, but basically, yes, we have uh, tried to calculate these coefficients here to see in this equation, and we had some uh, really similar uh, results uh, for it, but there is no, not a lot of points, so that's why I haven't shown that. Uh, okay. Yeah, we have only three points, but that's uh, the CF coefficient. Uh, you know, different, uh, it, it is current here, but basically you can rely on the current velocity. And we get quite a similar result with the velocity. Okay, thanks. Um, let's talk about the overlap shape. Did you find, uh, did you try to fit the, this loop into a function, or maybe the upper part of a function and the lower part? Okay, so you might be like a, a catenary equation. You might be able to fit to uh, cos, a hyperbolic cosine function, but we haven't done that uh, because the cosine happened with, uh, with no drag coefficient. But yeah, maybe we do try to fit uh, I don't know. I think that would make it. Oh, the catenary. Hello everyone, my name is Igor Sikachino and I'm the reviewer from Team Ukraine on the problem number 13, string shooter. And this problem we should have studied the shape uh, of the rope which is rotated using the following mechanism uh, uh, at high speeds and study the shape and the propagation of waves uh, on the loop depending on the row parameters. And now I will go into depth uh, about the analysis of the report and the opposition. So, uh, at the report, uh, we've been presented to our demonstration, which allowed us to clearly see the phenomenon and uh, understand uh, uh, how it looks. Uh, then, uh, the, uh, the reporter uh, explained to us the importance of the air friction uh, in the system, because uh, the report observed in their uh, stu experimental studies that the, in the vacuum camera, uh, due to the lack of air, the, the road just can be 
the, uh, due to the gravity, and they didn't observe that phenomenon, uh, which is uh, really good in our opinion. Then they performed, uh, they wrote the equation of motion to study the shape of the loop and understand how this is dependent on the parameters, and they performed a simulation to study the shape of the loop uh, and uh, solved this uh, equation of motion numerically to obtain the theoretical shape. Uh, then uh, uh, the reporter considered the wave propagation both uh, theoretically and experimentally, uh, and uh, they compared the results uh, uh, qualitatively. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we think that uh, there was a lack of comparison numerically uh, because we understand, we see from the uh, we see a clear difference between the uh, experimental results and theoretical prediction. But there was no explanation about uh, what co what causes this. Uh, this equality, and we want to uh, better understand why is it so. And there was no quality. Uh, and overall, we think that uh, a reporter uh, presented us a good solution, and uh, uh, we should go, then go to discuss more. It, it discuss it more in depth about the position. Uh, the opponent mentions about uh, the loop shape analysis. Uh, uh, points out the important mechanical properties of the uh, screen and. Uh, uh, but we think that uh, the opponent uh, didn't uh, stop to, to didn't uh, um, uh, relate too much time to the study of the wave propagation, which is uh, very important in this problem. Uh, then, in the discussion, the opponent proposed a question about the Grange description. We clearly understand that yes, we can uh, describe, and the reporter could have described the system as the Lagrange uh, equation, but uh, as we've seen, uh, uh, it's not really important, and uh, it was uh, not a good point to discuss uh, because it was uh, irrelevant to the reporter's solution. Uh, but then they proceeded to discuss the drag force. Uh, which is, in our opinion, is a good discussion point. And now I propose you to discuss the following. Uh, we, I, want, I propose you to discuss the dependence of the loop shape, exact loop shape, on the parameters of the rope, uh, rope such as the light. So, uh, reporter, how does the sh exact shape of the loop, as you observed in the experiment, uh, change with the length? Yes, okay, so, well, if we start from something like this, the more we increase the, the length, uh, the more the gravity will take over the problem. So it, it starts to slowly go <coughs> down until it reaches this kind of maximum and it will fold it quite uh, horizontally. Okay, and the point, do we agree that, uh, that the theoretical approach the report pro pro proposed is valid for longer ropes? Could you repeat uh, Do you think that the theoretical approach a report proposed is valid for the longer ropes? Uh, yes, I think it, it works. But I think what is important for uh, long strings is also the source of energy, which are the, the motors. If the energy is enough, maybe the shape is not like that. But the shape is the same as we see with short strings. Uh, OK, and it's very important that the report uh, showed us that at high speeds, we get a, a big difference between the experiment and theory. Uh, how do you think uh, this is influenced by the instabilities uh, during the motion of the motors? Yes, so probably there is a lot of <coughs> information to the motor. We, we have to try to make a video of the system um, in front. And actually, I don't know if we can see that in live. You see that, I don't know if you can see that, but we see that it's not possible like that. So the, the faster we go, the, the higher the speculation are. So I guess that produces what that, uh, well, that, that makes it. Okay, you know, and Poland, do you think there is something that can be done to the experimental setup to eliminate this issue? Uh, well, I, I think maybe, well, but I, a problem I see with this experimental setup is the lower part. It introduced the uh, waves in the shape. And we could see in the experimental data that the data wasn't well, that good because there were like points, uh, mid points in the experimental data. So if we improve the lower part of this part, it, it, it seems not that soft for the shape of the, of the loop. If we improve that in the experimental, uh, the experimental data, we could improve the, the experimental data. Okay, and as we already touched the propagation of waves, uh, how how does it uh, experimentally depend on the different parameters of the system? Waves. Uh, the wave propagation. How, uh, well, uh, for 
if we eliminate the instability uh, during the motion, uh, we will get a better, uh, like, uh, I want to, you to describe the damping of these uh, waves. Okay, so we, we should try to derive the, um, the, 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 the vitas, uh, the speed, sorry, of the phase uh, velocity of the stream, maybe uh, going in Fourier space uh, with the R equation and try to derive the uh, wave, uh, wave number and uh, frequency equation. I don't know if it will help. Uh, but yes, I think we can derive the, the speed. Okay, and Apollon, how do you think? Is it possible to improve some parameters of the rope to uh, reduce the damping of the uh, wave propulsion? Yes, uh, an important parameter for the damping, I think, is the elasticity of the stream. Uh, yes, you use the, an extensible stream, and for that reason, we could see that in the bump, in the bump point, the waves were attenuated and dissipated. But what, what if we use an, an extensible stream? Maybe the waves uh, are not uh, are not cancelled in that in that part of the loop. No, no, no. Uh, okay, so uh, we have a question. Uh, a question for the board. Did you try to do experiments in Bayview in order to prove the hypothesis of the drag force? Yes, uh, that's what I said at the very beginning. We we done that in the vacuum belt, and uh, the falls dra uh, the string falls quite directly. And how many experiments did you perform? Did you change the, the string that you used in your experiment? So, yes, we've tried, and actually uh, there was no results for different reasons. Um, there were some uh, synthetic strings that worked, but uh, the, they were too heavy, and there was no enough drag force to make it rise. And uh, we have not a lot of torque uh, with our motor, so basically too heavy strings, it cannot uh, push us, so that's but limited. Our yes, the proposal, well, you said that the string was uh, too heavy. Yeah. But you could use, for example, wool, well, this material, <laughs> and a string made of that material to do the loop. And I think the drag force is very different, and it, it would be really interesting to see how the drag force really changed the shape of the loop. It, it, it's a proposal to improve the solution. Okay, we have a question from the, the review team. Yeah. Uh, as I understand, to describe uh, the whole shape, you need to set the initial and final um, angles uh, on the row. Which angles can be substituted and uh, do these uh, uh, angles depend on parameters of the system? So, sorry, what? The uh, depends on the initial angle? Well, uh, I can draw this. Oh. Uh, as we describe the uh, shape of the rope, the initial angle, uh, theta 1, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and final angle, theta 2. Uh, here you describe this, uh, which angles can be substituted in this period, how is it dependent on parameters? Oh, we haven't done that uh, theoretically. Uh, we assume that theta 1, what we call to the angle uh, of the motor, um, of, the, of the wooden plate, and this we uh, we calculated just looking at the, video, the photograph. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, and now uh, I propose you to discuss uh, well, uh, if we try to describe the waves that are not propagated in the uh, normal direction to the wave, but uh, along the stream. Is it possible to somehow describe it theoretically and study the experiment? So, what, what do you mean, like, along the... Uh, so, no, like so that? If, yes, if, if we, uh, we, we understand that due to the change in potential in different parts of the stream, yeah. there may be waves propagated along the stream. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to describe it? Uh, Theoretically, and the well, I guess that's what I've done uh, with uh, the wave equation. Um, we have the, the propagation of wave during the whole length of the string. I'm not sure I quite get your question. Uh, well, we have a normal wave propagating in the normal direction and the long of the string. Oh, the longitudinal propagation. Okay, yes. Uh, well, I, I think we maybe should have. Um, well, we should go to elastic domain. Right to have yes. uh, longitudinal yes. uh, uh, wave. If the string is in a stentible, there are no longitudinal waves to study. Right. <coughs> and the problem, do you think this will improve the solution? Well, it's maybe a generalization, generalization of the solution, but it wasn't a state in the problem, so it is like an extra point, but yes, it, it could improve the solution of, of uh, the problem. Uh, 
Oh, okay, we have a question. Well, we, we haven't seen anything, we, we haven't searched for anything about that. We have, well, we had an idea maybe to find the initial tension uh, thanks to these wheels and maybe um, with the, the, drag, the friction of the wheels find the initial condition for the tension, um, but we haven't studied that point that much. Uh, okay, Apon, can you uh, in short uh, describe uh, the how the discussion improves the solution of the reporter, and if you want to add the additional improvement measures. Yes, I, I think I, I, I think I, I think might be improved in the solution is the analysis, the physical analysis of the system. I mean, can this string be studied just as a as a free string? And what are the conditions of the of the closed string in the system? I mean, we can study this. Like a free string, including some conditions for the closed string, and what, what is the physical meaning of that of, of, of that system? I think that that one will improve. In, in. Can you turn it on? Yeah. Can you turn it on? So Also in the below part, the, and now I see that. <laughs> I haven't, I didn't understand it. Uh, try to do it. 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 Yeah, yeah, because I'm not going to do it. Yeah, we love the, but it's not something we have to do. Now you see that it's the other one. Yes, that's how I push it. This is what you're doing. Yes. continuous problem. Uh, but with this drag force, uh, I believe that it will tend to write the... Because as I see with the two forces pointed uh, in here, the resulting force is pulling you down here. So how can we go on this? Uh, it's probably because the, the continuity of the, of the, of the string, we, we would have to consider the effect of the tension. Now, I believe that the tension will uh, have an effect uh, to rise because of those tensions. Does any of the two other tools have something to say to this? Yes, I, I want to say something. Well, the analysis is when the string is is not in the spiral of the string. So it, it can be studied like a, a free string, a kind of. So when when we are in the spiral of the string, we can study it like an, a, a free string with initial conditions. And the initial condition is the momentum uh, which is gi given by the motors. So those are the initial conditions, and after the initial conditions, we can study the system with these two forces. So I think the analysis, it's accurate and can be modeled like this. Uh, okay, so uh, the, the shape of the rope is mostly defined by the tension due to the high speed, and the, uh, and the gravity is defined uh, when the, uh, if we study all the forces on the parts of the string, it turns out that the torque uh, exists that turns uh, the sleeves the rope up due to the air friction. 
So of course, at the top, the, uh, the resulting force tends to uh, increase, uh, to reduce the uh, position of the rope. But uh, due to the fast motion, this uh, part will move quickly to the other part of the string. And at the, uh, at the bottom, the, torque, uh, the force is higher lifting the, for, uh, the, the rope. So the resulting torque lifts the rope. Okay. Yes. I have a question. So uh, when you to, to the report actually, uh, when you model the waves, at some point you said that you consider the constant tension. Yes, if I just to... can, you, can you show the slide with the tension? With the plot of the tension of the along the shape. Not the equations, the, the, the plot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, do you think this is the case of the constant tension? No, absolutely not. Yeah. So, so, so. so uh, my, my point. Why, 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 why do I assume that the tension is constant to drop the dispersion? And it it was just trying to show uh, the behavior of the backward and forward behaving wave. And I believe that we really see what I've been talking about uh, for this part. And to the to the to the one and to the reviewer, do you believe that this provides uh, such a sufficiently good uh, description of the wave propagation? Uh, no, we, I don't think that it provides a full description of the wave propagation, but it, uh, it allows us to uh, obtain the results similar to the experimental result. Uh, the, it, the, uh, if we what, consider what, what the kind of results? Huh? What kind of results? Uh, the change of position and the change of uh, the change of position of the wave on the, in the, on the screen. Well, in yeah, my case, I, I don't really well for the tension analysis and in the wave propagation. I, I think there is something maybe wrong here because well, why is the tension not continuous in the bound part? I mean, because well, I think it, 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 it must be continuous the tension.